I would like to speak about the question of form in ambient music. Let me recall one of my first ambient experiences. A friend introduced me to the music of Fennis, the Viennese guitarist releasing on editions Migo. It evoked a musical state previously unknown to me. We listened to something going its way without asking us to follow it. It was the appearance of self-sufficiently shining beauty. When looking around, the ambience seemed transformed in a way that, for the first time, things seemed to be and last forever beyond our lives. So the experience was existential, for I understood myself as a mortal being in an immortal surrounding. It meant to me that uh, transcendence is a possibility that we can perhaps create ourselves something that endures. Ambient, the music of the room at the moment, sort of the, the, the music of the here and now, if you want, gives an impression of transcendence. transcendence. Doesn't this seem paradoxical at first? Last year I read a short article by Slavoj Žižek on Erik Satie's concept of furniture music, which struck me as a precise theorization of this apparent paradox shaping my original ambient encounter. Žižek argues that furniture music does not push an ambience in a certain direction, as for example supermarket or waiting room music do to, to create a soothing or more entertaining environment, but rather that it renders ambience, the room containing the furniture, visible. It draws attention to the background, the essence or non-essence of things, whatever your ontological convictions are. The music reframes its ambience in a way that makes the general frame of our reality perception appeal. As a result, the borders between foreground and background are dissolved by a new appearance of the things. And I would claim that this is appearance of appearance as such, not the appearance of the real things for the first time, but kind of the, the perception of perception. What, what happens when listening to this kind of ambient music? I would call this kind of ambient music uh, in the following ambient ambient. We can think of it as the original ambient idea, tracing it back to Satie, Cage and Emo. The fact that hopefully most of you won't identify the music of Satie and Cage with ambient tells us that there exists an idea of ambient beyond ambient ambient, beyond its theory of presentation and reception. It is a stylistic ambient for which I prefer the name immersive ambient in order to set a hard contrast between these two categories of thought. Let us talk about form in ambient ambient, so the classical ambient situation. The rendering visible of background requires a certain musical nature. Most famously for this procedure we have Cages 433 that shifts attention to something else than itself by emptiness. Emptiness can usually be found in ambient ambient less in a sonic sense than in respect to form. Slowly evolving soundscapes, long fades, endless loops, immovable drones, infinite processes, they all create one-dimensional movements or non-movements. Gradually in one foreseeable direction, wandering around a certain center, remain the same, moving without direction through different states, etc. Because ambient ambient has no complex, exciting formal development, no tense struggle towards an aim, no break and event, it gives space for the perceptive process previously described. The listener can enter and leave as he likes, for he knows that the music's expression is reduced to the core, which is I am. Again, the importance here in this I am is the emptiness, the lack of something. In this case, it's the lack of another verb following I am. You have uh, romantic music which is doing something, which is maybe screaming or suffering to you. 
which uh, I claim is not the case for this, what I call ambient ambient. In summer 2017, I went to the Heart of Noise Festival in Innsbruck and listened to ambient performances by such renowned artists as William Basinski, Christian Finesse, or Wolfgang Vogt, aka Gess. What all of them had in common was their immersive staging. The artist on the stage, the lights directed at her or him with a small light show or video, the music so loud you could barely understand your neighbor's conversation. How ambient music is presented in the typical romantic concert situation at a large number of festivals underpins my theory that the category of ambient has evolved which places the music in a non-ambient, actively focused, I would just use this as a commodity term, I know you hate it, um, si uh, listening situation. This is what I call immersive ambient. The term ambient here, first and foremost, denotes a sound aesthetic located in the rich, refined sonic universe which 40 years of ambient music have brought about. The problem lies in the fact that most immersive ambient has kept the formal character of ambient ambient, ignoring the fact that the listening situation differs significantly. We should ask ourselves whether a concert of the usual 40 to 60 minute set, which could be described with as interesting as ignorable, is a desirable experience. In fact, the concert situation requires the interesting and tends to prohibit the ignorable. While the music, the immersive ambient, treats both as if they were still equal in the situation. Being played in this immersive context, the question occurs if and how ambient can keep the listener's attention, which it is seeking now. So far, I hope to have outlined how the form of ambient essentially relates to its role in its environment. I've shown that this role is uh, changing, or at least that there are different roles, and the form is not. Of course, we must ask now, can ambient with a different role and with a different form still be ambient? To propose an answer to this question, let me refer to my own artistic work. This is very egocentric, but anyway. Uh, I try to compose my ambient music in a way that formal and sonic development are strictly linked to each other. The density or richness of both categories has limits. Formally, we could call the limit electroacoustic music, sonically we could call it noise. Both terms here are used as genre indicators. Also note that I would prefer not to assign my music to one of these categories exclusively. This quantitative limitation of formal structuring led me consequently to forms which are characterized by clarity and, and precision. Therefore, I use cuts as the main structuring element. A cut signifies human intervention in the audio, the composing of electronic music, the putting together to a specific form as such. In the ambient context, it functions as a counterpoint to fades, a moment of break opposing the eternity of drones, the mark of human creation in a certain ambience, which runs by itself. So, we could describe my compositional method as a musical self-reflection. Depending on your perspective, a reflection on electronic composition or form in ambient music. Self-reflexivity can take various shapes. You can understand my musical procedure as a negative exploration or explorative negation of what I reflected upon as typical formal models in ambient phase and so on. So I just use cuts, the opposite. On the other hand, the self-reflection can appear as over, affirmation, deconstruction, post, irony, etc. Defining is always the reference to ambient, to what we think of as 
ambient music as this, the kind of genre. The predominant but too often unmentioned formal characteristics of ambient can be rendered visible, broken, and reinvented continuously. But every time it can be a more refined, yet more meaningful change, which will bring about a whole new tradition of form in ambient. The self-reflexive procedure is obviously not limited to form or a formal reflection of form. As I tried to show how connections exist between form and presentation, so do they between productive, distributive and receptive aspects. Self-reflexivity is, just like most ambient music, a process ad infinitum. But therein will appear truly new possibilities, just like truly new formal sections can appear in the same piece of ambient. Thank you.